and our own safety, our own security, depends upon our willingness to do what it takes to defend this nation and uphold the values that we stand for. Timeless ideals that will endure long after those who offer only hate and destruction have been vanquished from the earth. May God bless our troops, and may God bless the United States of America. The most watched news in Western Washington. This is King 5 News. And President Obama just laid out his strategy for fighting ISIS, the militant group that has terrorized Iraq and Syria and executed a couple of American journalists. The president says the United States will wage a military campaign that will target Islamic State fighters with airstrikes wherever they exist. The president says the U.S. will lead a broad coalition to degrade and then destroy the Islamic State. But this is not our fight alone. American power can make a decisive difference, but we cannot do for Iraqis what they must do for themselves, nor can we take the place of Arab partners in securing their region. The president says the campaign will not involve U.S. combat troops on the ground. He says it's different from the Iraq and Afghanistan wars and mirrors U.S. counterterrorism efforts in Yemen and Somalia. The U.S. has launched drone strikes in those countries for years. Now tonight, uh, Karam Dana, he's a UW Bothell assistant professor of uh, Middle East politics, among many other titles, and he's joining us to shed some light on this. Political science uh, professor at UW Bothell, also director of the Center for American Muslim Research and Middle East Public Opinion Project. Thank you for being with us. Thanks for having me. Did the president tonight outline, and was he specific enough, to the American people and to Congress that will assure them that this fight that we are about to enter will be successful and keep U.S. interest overseas and at home safe. Well, it's quite interesting because I think that that actually precisely what he did. He actually outlined a strategy that would minimize having troops on the ground uh, by simply having a coalition from the region, it seems, that would uh, be basically doing most of the work, it seems. For, for me, it seems that that intervention, um, uh, in kind of trying to contain ISIS, is, is a bit... Um, too late, in my opinion, because there was a, a crisis that has existed for quite some time, uh, you know, growing out in Syria, that there needed to be some sort of intervention, not necessarily uh, a full-on military intervention, but rather a much more of a humanitarian type. And I think this is the reason why ISIS has gained a lot of the grounds that it has in, in, recent, in recent weeks, unfortunately. I think American people right now know ISIS very little. It just, this is a bad group and we must deal with them. The problem is, if they have spread over more regions, and if you have to get into Syria specifically to eradicate them, as the president said, uh, degrade and destroy, mm -hmm. how much will the American people, I mean, it, it's a question of how much do they have to do and will the American people stand for that if that mission of just airstrikes changes? Well, I don't think that only the American people will not stand for uh, a prolonged military intervention in the region, because if history tells us anything, prolonged interventions uh, of Americans in the region can only produce negative and disastrous results, unfortunately. Nothing very positive has emerged out of the intervention in Iraq and Afghanistan, unfortunately. In fact, one could easily argue that the reason as to why we have something like ISIS, um, we, we, it has to do with uh, something, uh, you know, due to the fact that the Americans hasn't really, there was a conflict that has existed for quite um, about two years or so in, in Syria, that there hasn't been some sort of intervention to address that on a geo geopolitical level. Now, um, and also with the history of uh, violence that has existed in Iraq for the past two decades plus, you've got uh, kind of, that's really as to, as to why you have a, a, a group like ISIS, unfortunately. So um, will there be an American intervention in, in Iraq or Syria? That's very unlikely that we would have real troops on the ground. It would be surgical, if any. Given what the president said tonight, though, I mean, is it possible to crush ISIS or ISIL? Is it possible to really lay them out and uh, well, it's, eliminate them? It's, it's an interesting question. Um, the territory that they seem to, to control um, really is, is more or less, while there are a lot of civilians that, that are there, it's, it's primarily desolate. So we've got about four million or so people who live under that particular mm -hmm. region that they uh, have conquered already. Um, I, I think the best strategy for, for, uh, for the US government and, and, and whoever comes as part of this coalition is to really think strategically in terms of uh, how do you isolate, how do you contain, first of all, isolate, and also really suffocate the source of funding, because that seems to be one of the major reasons as to why ISIS or ISIL, if you'd like to call it as such, uh, uh, they've actually 
you know, are able to gain ground uh, and more and more ground in, in the region. And, that, and that, goes beyond, that goes beyond the military purposes of this particular campaign then. Yes, I think there has to be more of in terms of, so I, I honestly think that the, the rationale as to how the United States needs to address that challenge or, or that, that problem mm -hmm. uh, of, of ISIS has to be a combination of diplomacy, dialogue, in addition to exchanging intelligence with our allies in the region, but with an emphasis on not allowing authoritarian regimes to use, unfortunately, this opportunity to think of it as yet another war on terror, whereby you've got authoritarian regimes uh, kind of taking on any liberal voice that comes out in their societies to critique uh, uh, much of uh, much of the policies, unfortunately, that are happening in the Middle East. And mm -hmm. the past few years, if they've proved anything, is that the people of the Middle East uh, and the Arab world are able to stand against authoritarian regimes. And uh, uh, what I worry about that sort of intervention now is that that will give ammunition, in the sense, for those authoritarian regimes to, to, to deal with their own societies, unfortunately. And what, what about all of the fighters who have joined? This seems to me to be a little bit different from uh, the past years of th that we've seen in Iraq uh, and Afghanistan. You've got all of these fighters from other countries now pouring in there to support mm -hmm. ISIS, and countries are going to have to deal with them, but how do, you, how do you stop those people from going there? This is a fantastic question, Greg. In fact, you know, I actually perplexed over this. Um, how would you end up with about 5,000 to 10,000, exactly the, the exact number? We do not know, in fact. How do you end up with five to 10,000 people? Um, and I, I know the Middle East, and I know that actually, you know, a flag is raised oftentimes if a, if a person of a particular background is trying to cross borders. Um, having all of those fighters ending up in Syria fighting this prolonged war, which in fact, in my opinion, has contributed to this problem, how do you end up with them there? So how do you stop that is really with, with uh, really uh, having that coalition of different governments to speak um, to, to freely uh, uh, with, with them in terms of what, what are the expectations of the American in relation to, to this particular crisis. And, and honestly, I think it, it's, it's really about the money. If we're able to control the funding for ISIS, uh, we are able to control this particular threat. Very quickly, this is a, a region of the world where it's almost like a, w whatever move you make, there are unintended consequences. Yeah. You hope it doesn't blow back against you in some mm -hmm. fashion. Uh, we run that risk, though, with this, do we not? Absolutely, we do. Um, every time intervention, uh, especially military intervention, has a lot more negatives that emerge, in fact, um, mm -hmm a lot more negatives than, than the positives. Um, and if anything, again, history tells us quite a bit. Uh, uh, we don't have to look that far. 2003 intervention uh, really created a, a, a serious mess, unfortunately. And in fact, the, you know, the, the, the prolonged war and terror created authoritarian regimes that led, in my opinion, to you know, the people going down to the streets and fighting against their own authoritarian regimes and, and toppling some of them. Uh, but then there seems to be uh, you know, that, that the conditions around which um, injustice and various forms of injustice in, in the Middle East have allowed for a particular mm -hmm. uh, group like ISIS to emerge. And unfortunately, it's, in my opinion, I think it's time for the US foreign policy to have the no double standard policy from now on, really to actually speak in terms of democracy and, and participatory, participatory democracy, whereby people are the partners uh, of, of, of that policy as opposed to only governments in the region. Karam Dana, you know, Bafal, Assistant Professor of Middle East Politics, among many other titles. Thank you so much for coming Thank in you to Greg. kind of break Thank this down for us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.